Hey guys, it's Monster Caravan, and today we're going to have a short, quick video about building your own HDPC. Um, I'm not going to go into the specifics of building it, I'm just going to show you the parts that you can get to build an HDPC for the lowest amount that can play games and watch movies. So, first, we're going to start off with a hard drive. Um, you can get this one, or you can get even the 500 gig model. This is a 250 gig model. You get the 500 gig model for like 60 bucks. Um, it's a standard 7200 RPM drive, worse than the digital, so it's a decent quality. Then we go to the motherboard. This one we're going for the low end um, AMD A55 chipset. That means you don't get USB 3, but this gigabyte board does have onboard HDMI right there, DVI, VGA D sub, uh, two USBs on the back, should have headers, um, was that two SATA ports. Actually, four side of ports, and you got standard audio out. Um, but one thing to note about the system, it does uh, support uh, DDR3 uh, 2400 megahertz overclocked. Brip Jaws X series, uh, 2x4 gigabytes, uh, 240 pin DDR3 2400. Uh, it does run up to 2400 megahertz when you stick it in the board. It might, it might only work at 20, uh, 2133, so you might have to finesse. Um, the, 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 the BIOS or UFI settings uh, to get it to run at 2400. Next, we have the AMD A10 6800K. Much advancements over Trinity. Um, as a matter of fact, you can get the Trinity A10 5800K for $129. Uh, $20 less than this model, the 6800K. Uh, performance uh, is less than 5% difference, and we're going from 3.8 gigahertz on the 5800k to 4.1 gigahertz on the 6800k so that's a quite a small uh, differential but the 6800k does overclock better and it does use a slight bit less energy than the uh, or power than the 5800k um, so that is a good pickup and it does support native DDR 2133 RAM out the box which the 5800K only supported 1866. This is a small um, Apex Micro ATX Media, uh, Media Center HTPC case. Uh, pretty basic. It does come with a 275 watt power supply. That should be enough to power the board and the APU which is 100 watts. It does have an an external uh, five inch or the five and a quarter inch drive bay. If I'm not saying that wrong, five and a quarter inch, and you can have a, a 3.5 inch bay in there. Power reset. It's got two USB ports at the front, so you can plug in your PS3 controllers or adapters or what have you. The coolest thing about this build is, for right now, you're paying 371 bucks just to get the basic system. Uh, and the RAM, you probably won't upgrade anytime soon, but you can always upgrade the hard drive. You can pop in, uh, you know, it does have four SATA, SATA ports, maybe SATA 2. So you can pop in some some, uh, some cheaper SSDs in there, you know, like uh, Samsung 840s, those were some cheap. You're getting this system right now that can play games 1080p for latest games low, 1080p for older games high, or for older than that, you can get max settings. Um, newer games, if you want to get like good frame rates, you can probably drop it down to uh, 900p or 768p or 720p um, to get you know like 30 plus, sometimes 60 frames per second, depending on the game. Really, um, you can always add in an external graphics card when you save up a little bit more money, or if you want to add a little bit more to the budget. So, so it's a pr pretty good. Uh, place to start especially because of what's happening with Xbox and uh, the overreaching of Microsoft's uh, policies that they set on the Xbox uh, at this point why not just go PC you spent you spend let's say if the Xbox comes in $399 you're spending a pretty pretty much the same price uh, although you probably want to get that Wi-Fi adapter if you, if you're not going to be really plugged in you want to get an Xbox wireless Xbox controller for Windows it's like I don't know 50 bucks uh, so it's going to be a slight, a slightly more expensive and you won't get the console exclusives but you'll still get access to tons and tons of games that the consoles won't have access to because they don't have backwards compatibility um, you get you know access to PC exclusives like uh, some of Valve's games 
um, which aren't really exclusives anymore, or stuff like Warframe, which is pretty much a PC exclusive. It's gonna, I've heard it's going to be exclusive for the PS4 for the consoles as well. You get stuff like uh, Scribble Knots, which isn't you know isn't uh, available on the PS3 and Xbox only for the Wii and the DS and Android and iPhone and iOS actually rather. So there, there are advantages to getting this kind of a setup. And right here, for you know, under 400 bucks, you're getting a pretty good system. Um, so that's it. Um, actually, I'll show you uh, some videos of it that I have in the playlist right here. So this is, I'm going to show you Battlefield and where is it? Black Ops. So this is Battlefield. Let's check out his settings and what he's running at. So he's recording 720p on medium settings. You know, perhaps it does take a hit on the FPS. So you can probably get 900p on medium settings and you can get above 30 frames. If I extrapolate the performance like that. Um, let's see, it looks pretty good. Let's, let's skip ahead. Let's see if there's any action. Man, he got his ass whooped. Again. Uh, respawn guy. So you can see he's, he's playing and he does, doesn't seem to be having any issues with, you know, with, uh, any lag spikes, um, you know, messing him up or what have you. Although Battlefield isn't really a Twitch game per se. But let's check out this Twitch game. This is Black Ops 2. It's pretty much on all high settings. No, uh, no anti-aliasing, and we turned off the V-Sync. But he's recording in 720p, you know, 30 frames per second. It's, uh, average. Um, without the recording, you could probably get um, on all high settings 40, 45 frames. Um, it should be playable at uh, 30 frames at 720 with some. Uh, settings dropping uh, down, uh, but well, let's take a look at how it uh, plays. And if you see any stuttering, um, chalk it up to my system. I am running uh, a Linux, and I'm running Flash, which is pretty much on the CPU. So, any stuttering is because it's not hardware accelerated. So you can see the graphics are pretty good, probably better than the, the PS3 and the Xbox looks. And there are actually plenty of gameplay demos on YouTube. Uh, let's check out this one as well. Uh, this is Resident Evil Revelations, the latest Resident Evil. So let's see how a slower game kind of looks on the system. So he's running um, 1080p. Um, you should be able to get 60 frames 1080p on the Richland. Although it does have a slight overclock, well, not a slight actually. That's a 250 megahertz overclock on the the GPU, and he's running DDR2400. All right, so there you have it. The um, so again, that's 371 dollars. Um, you can get some parts uh, cheaper depending on where you buy them like um, you can get the 5800k for 129 some places uh, excuse me, some places have them as low as 109 dollars uh, ram is pretty much that's pretty much the average price you're gonna get for 2400 because it's pretty pretty high standard you can get the this board uh, a50 with an a55 chipset for 49 bucks some places might have them lower and hard drives, the prices kind of went up in the past couple of months. It might go back down. So you're getting like a pretty much a, a 500 gig for the same price. I don't know why they have it like this. Let me show you what I mean. That's $59 for the 500 gig. So there you have it. Um, basic APU setup.